Hey guys and welcome to How to Gastro. Today we'll be talking about Zenka's diverticulum. So what is Zenka's diverticulum? Zenka's diverticulum is a sac-like outpouching of the mucosa and submucosa through Killian's triangle, an area of muscular weakness between the transverse fibers of the cricopharyngeus muscle and the inferior pharyngeal constrictor muscles. Zenka's diverticulum is known as a pseudo diverticulum, which basically means a false diverticulum, because it does not involve all the layers of the esophageal wall. So at the bottom here, you can see Killian's triangle, and this is actually where Zenka's diverticulum forms. Uh, on the right here, you see this is the outpouching. And from a lateral view, you can see the pouch at the back here. Here's the esophageal wall, and here's a pouch coming out of it. So this is actually what Zenka's diverticulum is. The epidemiology. Zenka's diverticulum is a fairly uncommon disease and has an average incidence of 2 per 100,000 persons per year. However, there is a significant geographical variation around the world and the incidence appears to be the highest in Northern Europe, North America and Australia. It is also largely confined to those over the age of 70 and males outnumber females by a ratio of 5 to 1. So what are some of the signs and symptoms that a patient with Zenka's diverticulum would experience? Dysphagia or a difficulty in swallowing and a sense of a lump in the throat and this occurs in almost 90% of patients with Zenka's diverticulum. Food might also get trapped in the outpouching leading to regurgitation which is the reappearance of ingested food in the mouth, cough due to food regurgitated into the trachea, halitosis or smelly breath as the stagnant food is digested by microorganisms, infection, a sensation of food sticking in the throat or unexplained weight loss. Continuing with the signs and symptoms, I put up this diagram to give you guys an idea of why Zenkas presents with these kind of specific symptoms. So you can imagine food entering the oral cavity being swallowed down here and usually it passes down this way into the esophagus and in Zenka's uh, a lot of the food has the tendency to just go into this little pouch here and just collect there and the problem with that food collecting there is that it's going to cause first of all halitosis or smelly breath because that rotting is just going to come back out here uh, into the, the open uh, it's also going to cause regurgitation. This food is just going to whoops back up here into the mouth. And it could cause a cough also because if the food is collecting here, uh, it will have a tendency also to get into the trachea or the airway of the patient. Sinker's diverticulum is actually very near to the trachea, very near to the esophagus and also very near to the mouth. So all the symptoms that the patient will present with are very fitting. So what are some of the complications that a patient with Zenka's diverticulum could experience? And the most common life-threatening complication in patients with Zenka's is an aspiration. And I showed you guys on the diagram before that the, the diverticulum is actually very close to the trachea. And if rotting food is able to get into that trachea and enter the pulmonary field or the lungs, we're going to have a huge problem. So that is actually what aspiration means here and other complications include a massive bleeding from the mucosa or from fistulization into a major vessel or esophageal obstruction and fistulization into the trachea so I put a note on the side and if you don't know what a fistula is it's basically a passage between a hollow tubular organ and the body surface or between two hollow or tubular organs so you can imagine a passage here, this is actually the trachea and the esophagus is very very narrow here because of this diverticulum is very large in size. It pushes down on the lumen and the lumen size is actually decreased considerably in a large diverticulum. And this diverticulum will actually cause an esophageal obstruction which it is actually doing here. And in smaller diverticulums you can see the patient is still able to eat and the esophagus is not obstructed, this lumen is quite large and food is able to pass down here. So how can we diagnose a Zenka's diverticulum? 
We could use a barium swallow. Barium sulfate is a metallic compound that shows up on x-rays and is used to help see abnormalities in the esophagus and stomach. And when taking the test, the patient drinks a preparation containing the solution and the x-rays will track its path through the digestive system. And this is actually what we could see on a barium swallow x-ray from a patient with Zenker's diverticulum. And you can see here on the left we have a normal esophagus, no outpouching, no diverticular. And right here you can see a small diverticulum. Here is the hypopharyngeal outpouching, which is Zenker's. And here is a much larger diverticulum. And you can see here the esophagus is not really that obstructed but here because we have a much larger diverticulum it's going to push down in that esophageal tube and cause an obstruction there. We could also diagnose Zenkers by endoscopy but something to note here is that endoscopy is not always advised as an initial investigation because of the risk of perforating the lesion. So you can see here this is the normal esophagus going down and here we have this outpouching uh, at the back of the esophagus and we have the collection of food there and the food is actually rotting in time and uh, it's not very good at all. Zincus can also be diagnosed by computer tomography and on a CT scan it appears as a structure arising posteriorly from the hypopharynx and is filled with gas, fluid, oral contrast material or a mixture of these. So usually these people also have to take some kind of contrast to make sure that Zenkers is uh, more visible on a CT. And you can see here uh, where my red arrow is, there is this abnormal structure here that appears to be filled with gas and fluid. So staging, there is actually three staging systems for Zenkers diverticulum. The Lahe system, in which stage 1 is a small mucosal protrusion is present, stage 2 a definite sac is present but the hypopharynx and esophagus are in line, stage 3 the hypopharynx is in line with the diverticulum and the esophagus is indented and pushed anteriorly. We also have the Morton system and here there's also three divisions. Small sacs are less than 2 cm in length, intermediate sacs are 2 to 4 cm in length and large sacs are greater than 4 cm in length. We also have the Van Oerbeek system and here the small sacs are less than one vertebral body in length, intermediate sacs are one to three vertebral bodies in length and large sacs are greater than three vertebral bodies in length. So these systems essentially use either the size of the diverticulum to stage it or the effect that the diverticulum has on surrounding structures. Treatment. If the diverticulum is small and asymptomatic, no treatment is actually necessary. And if it is a bit larger and symptoms are present, we could treat with a surgical approach. And option one here is an endoscopic repair of the Zenkers diverticulum. And in this surgical approach, what essentially happens is that this septum that divides the actual diverticulum and the esophagus is severed or cut. And when that happens, the diverticulum actually becomes one with the esophagus. So food is not going to really have a tendency to get stuck here. It's just going to push in and push out and that's going to solve most of our problems. You can see here on the diagram at the bottom, picture A talks about the Zenkers diverticulum from a proximal lumen perspective and the esophageal lumen is seen above and the diverticulum below. So here we have the esophageal lumen, here we have the diverticulum lumen. And picture B, after therapy, the septum has been severed, creating a common cavity between the esophagus and the diverticulum. So here you can see that it has been severed. This is, of course, a view from above. So you can see that the septum has been uh, cut open here. Picture C is actually a lateral view of the first image. So that was before treatment, before this was cut. So this is actually how a patient will present to the clinic with Zenkers diverticulum. And picture D shows the after surgery or post treatment picture. And this shows what a successful endoscopic repair of Zenkers diverticulum looks like. Treatment option two is an endoscopic staple diverticulectomy, ESD, with or without a myotomy. So we can see here a 
diverticulectomy basically means that the diverticulum is severed, it's cut to removed. Uh, a myotomy basically means that the muscle is wrapped around to close the, the opening here. And this is not always done because sometimes we could just use staples to staple the muscles back together and that actually works perfectly too. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this video very informative. Please like, comment, subscribe and share. And if you would like to download this presentation, you can click the link in the description and it will take you right to the download page. Thanks again. Bye-bye.